Why this approach? One of the things that researchers found when they were doing similar studies, the financial diaries in India, Bangladesh, and South Africa, the studies that ultimately came together as Portfolios of the Poor, a book about how the world's poor, living on under $2 a day, actually get through a year. The researchers kept on going back to the families week after week, or every two weeks usually. And by doing that, they could fill in gaps and earn trust and collect much more precise information about important economic activities. The data in India, for example, that Orlando Ruthven collected in the Financial Diaries showed that Indian households were on average starting some kind of new financial relationship every two weeks. The kind of activity was phenomenal. People were going to a money lender or starting a new savings club or borrowing from a landlord, some kind of new relationship on average every two weeks. That changed the way that we thought about the financial needs of poor households. There's been a great movement to provide microcredit and micro saving services to poor households with the idea that the fundamental needs of poor households are all around investing in small businesses. But what we saw is that poor families themselves often would take those loans and use them for consumption, just putting food on the table, dealing with health problems, dealing with education issues, maybe paying down a very expensive loan. It wasn't all about small business. In fact, a lot of it, more of it, was about these other parts of life, the kinds of things that we take for granted. The FDIC counts that there are 17 million adults in America who have no savings account, no bank account, and who are trying to get by without those kinds of services that we take for granted. The FDIC counts another 43 million adults who have bank accounts or savings accounts of some kind, but are still turning to check cashers, pawnbrokers, payday lenders to meet their financial needs. It's costly, it's often predatory, but those are the services that poor families are turning to. The question is why and can we do better? That's what the Financial Diaries Project is all about. Spending time with low-income families, trying to understand the logic of their choices, how they're living day to day, week to week, month to month. It's not surprising we saw that when they have access to better financial tools, they address those kinds of needs that crop up all the time and that determine how well you can deal with the shocks of everyday life.